All right, everybody, welcome out to another Windshield Time episode. I'm here uh, with Brandon, our CEO. I'm Joey, and we're here with Spencer Schwartz. The yeah. anticipation is killing oh me, my Shorts. Gosh. I was just waiting for you to cut me off <laughs> as soon as I said something. I wish I had a dump button for Shorts so I could just boom. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Shorts, and making us look good, as good as possible. Yeah. And that is not possible. So uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, something that is part of EOS, Level 10 Meetings. Yeah. So Level 10 Meetings are one of the first things that we were introduced to at, when we were investigating EOS. Level 10s really come from uh, a concept in a book called Death by Meeting. Um, It's kind of a parable about a company that, you know, they go into a meeting and everybody's kind of, you know, lazily coming in. There's not a real vision for the meeting. They eat a snack. They talk about the same thing they talked about the week before, and then they adjourn. And the next week, the guy comes into the meeting, same thing. You know, they come in, grab a snack. The guy gets up there, talks for a few minutes. It's basically the same thing that happened the week before. He checks with some people that were supposed to accomplish some tax tasks from the week before, and, oh, yeah, I haven't got to it yet. So this guy kind of recognizes all that, and so he changes the way that meetings are. And I think uh, we've talked about this a little bit before um, and kind of why we changed to the EOS, you know, system period and brandon that you've shared your experiences with meetings that happened at mountain land prior to eos yeah um today we're kind of going to go through the um structure of a level 10 meeting and really the reason behind each of those components um so the first thing that you do in a level 10 meeting and by the way you all should be having some sort of level 10 meeting at least once a month in your department so if you're not Ask your supervisor when you're going to start having those. You know, even, you know, drivers, you should be having some sort of level 10 meeting at some point. And it Um, should be same time. Same time, same Same place. Same day. Same, yep, everything. It needs to be consistent. So if if you all- same format. That's the other key to this too. If you all are doing it once a month, it needs to be like the third Thursday or whatever. It needs to be consistent so that everybody knows so they can plan ahead. For our executive team, it's every single Monday at 10 o'clock, and we go for 90 minutes. And if it's not, you know, if it's not accomplished within that 90 minutes, it goes to the next week. So you go by importance of issue. Start on time, end on time. Yep. Because we we have to respect everybody else's time. Uh, if, If something goes over, then you're not very respectful of the person that's in that room and their schedule. So we always start on time, we always end on time. So the first thing that happens in a level 10 meeting is what's called a segue. And really that component is meant to break up uh, and be a transition from what happened before the meeting to getting into the meeting. So the way that EOS does it or teaches you to do it is, hey, you know, your normal BS session that happens before a meeting, let's transition that into being more structured so that everybody gets, gets a chance to talk and everybody gets to share something about what they're doing personally and professionally that was a win. So you take a quick five minutes and you go around the room and you say, okay, give me a business win and give me a, perf- uh, a home win, you know, a per- personal, personal and win. professional. And I think that really does serve pretty well to break it up. I don't know how you feel about that. No, I, I like it because... Sometimes ours goes a little bit longer because it's an interesting story of something that happened. But um, I love hearing the business wins, but just as much I love hearing about the personal wins. And the personal wins, uh, you know, for our group, kind of just turn into like, hey, this is what's going on at home. Yeah. Like a cool story from what's going on yeah, at home. Yeah, something you did over the weekend. Or- yeah. You know, you got uh, um, <clears throat> Ben usually, you know, at this time of year. Yeah. Uh, he's got his little boy, Brian, that's wrestling. Yeah. And so you usually hear, okay, this was the wrestling tournament for the past weekend. And how, how did Brian, Brian did. do? Yeah. And, you know, he's got his daughter, Mick, that's in there too. And uh, she's wrestling. So you hear about that. Like, and to me, that's like, I love that kind of stuff and just hearing about what's going on and everything. So it's just as important in my mind to hear about those as the business ones that we're, yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. But, it, it's, uh, It's always interesting. You know, Calvert, he travels a lot for, you know, the company and some personal, but he's always on the road. 
And so when his when he's able to be home, he usually his segue is usually based around his family. Yep. Um, and it's usually his parents, which is kind of fun, you know. He doesn't even realize he does it probably, but it's all it's usually something like, Yeah, I got to, you know, go and see mom and dad and, yeah. and took him up to Jackson Hole. Yeah, yeah. He's we gotta go eat at the restaurant up there. Yeah, they're very they're very he's very involved with his parents, which I think is awesome. Yeah. And, you know, us, it's usually something to do with our kids or you, you got know. usually dance competitions yeah this time of year it's usually dance i got volleyball softball. rugby yep for my kids but. Yeah, and, and bruce he's his uh second oldest is learning to drive and you know so soccer soccer a lot a of soccer uh, so yeah there's there's usually something going on that way and it just it gives a personal touch to the meaning so you kind of remember these are humans we're that we're in here with i think it well it brings that personal touch and it lets us have that connection on a personal side too exactly yeah which we already do let's yeah. be honest but you know if it, if it was a new group or if it's a different group like probably within our company it just gives a little bit of a a softer side to yeah. it's not always have to be about business everything that we do yeah i mean we are human beings and we have families and we have personal lives so it's okay to share it well and for us it really does serve to break it up like hey our meeting has started yep this is what this is where we go first so it's not a very serious thing. It's like, hey, let's talk about some wins. Let's get us started on the right foot. We're not going to talk about anything negative. We're going to talk about positive things, and that you carry that energy into your meeting. Yep. That's kind of what I like about yep, it. Me too. Um, second, from there is headlines. So something that happened that was uh, interesting within your department, uh, within the company. So for us, it's it's the whole company. Yeah. Um, so. It could be, you know, a, a it could be a cro- it could be cross department too. Yeah. If you're in one department and you see something, someone did something awesome, like Spencer Schwartz did. He actually did a good job. Then you could put that as a headline too, right? Because that doesn't happen very often. No, not at all. <laughs> Just kidding. But that could be if I was in finance and I said, "Hey, you know, Spencer Schwartz, he he helped me out on this or yeah. this, that, or the other." That could be a headline too, right? And Spencer's been helping, you know, HR with some some video that's exactly sort of thing. so they they could definitely say something like that yep um a lot of times you know we look at the business wins like last month in um april so happens to have been our biggest month ever as a company in terms of revenue yeah so that's a huge win huge. and we haven't even had our first level 10 since then so that will probably be somebody's headline oh yeah um but it, headlines are really to serve as something that all of us can celebrate together. Yep. Um, and, and it can also be something that's just of importance. Like if somebody had, you know, a, an illness in the family or if somebody is ill that we need to know about as a team that's going to affect our team, then we should probably know about it in headlines. And we do it a little bit different too, not suggesting that everybody does this, but we also talk about our schedules. Yeah. Because what we were finding early on is there was kind of this, we weren't coordinating very well. Yeah, we weren't, we were overlapping some travel. Yep. Or we were um, trying to plan something and and didn't realize somebody was out of town. Yep. And that happens a lot. So it just gives us kind of a, hey, oh, you're going to St. George, I'm going to St. George. Let's get in the truck together. Exactly. Or um, uh, I think like this just happened a few weeks ago. Ben looked at my schedule and noticed that, oh, you're going to be in Orm. Do you have anything going on? No. Can you come out to the basin for the day? Yeah. Awesome. So he was able to see that. And I hurried and switched my schedule around and went out to the basin for a day to yeah. spend some time with him. And he wanted to talk to me and go see some stuff. So. Yeah. Or if there's a, there's, you know, tra- if Calvert's going to traveling to St. George and I was going to go there the following week, yeah. let's save some fuel Bingo. and I'll jump in with you and let's go. Yep. So yeah, for our team, we, we put well that, that in way. headlines because it's not an issue. It's not a to do. It's just it's a headline. It's yeah. a, it's an for your information. information. Yep. Uh, after headlines, it always goes to follow up on to dos. So anything that came out of issues from the week prior, or the meeting prior, and in, in anybody else's case, the meeting prior needs to be accounted for. So whoever's running that meeting needs to make sure that the to-dos or the action items from that meeting are being accounted for and who is responsible for that. So you you go through that process, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well, but the to-dos are always checked before you go back into the issues list. 
And that's really the accountability portion of it. So if I had something that I needed to do from the prior week, during the week, I need to be, I need to go into our uh, software and check off that I did it. Or yep. I can do it right there at that moment. Yep. So whoever's running the meeting says, you know, Joey, it looks like you were supposed to, you know, call this vendor about a pricing change. Did you get that done? Yep, got that done. Okay, I'll mark it off as done. And your goal is to make sure that you have 100% completion yeah. on your to-dos. Then you get the little fireworks on yeah, it. The fireworks and confetti hey. go off. Yeah, it's great. And if you don't get it done, wah, wah, then what happens becomes is... becomes an issue again. Yep. We put it on the what's called the IDS. Yep. And so that's the next piece of the meeting is it goes to the issues list. We actually have two. Scorecard and rock review. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Sorry. So score jumping ahead next. of yourself because IDS is the meat of the issue or the, it is or the meat of the meeting. So meat of the meeting. Meat of the meeting. Meat of the meeting. That's good. Meat of the meeting. All so right. scorecard comes next. Um, your scorecard is all your measurables. So for our team, you know, the first thing is revenue. Are we check? You know, we check in on revenue to see if that week versus the previous year, the same days, if we have increased our sales more than 10%, uh, actually it's 12%. Yeah. So if we've increased our sales more than 12%, then it shows up as green. If we haven't, it shows up as red. And then we get to determine whether it's far enough off or if there's been enough weeks in a row that it's off that we make that an issue. Yep. Um, and then we go from revenue to what things that drive profit. So your AR, your open orders, your inventory, uh, are those you know within the parameters that we set? Head count. So we check those. Then we check head count. We check um, discounts. Uh, AP yep. if we've taken discounts, and that's pretty much it. So we we have I think twelve measurables that we look at every Monday morning. And these measurables are supposed to be predictive. Yep. They predict the future of what the financial outcome yep. should be, and so. I got asked this question. I was just at a conference earlier this week, and I, I just chatted with a guy that runs EOS as well, and he's like, tell me about your scorecards. They've been doing it for two years, and he's like, is it predictive? And I said, you know, I said it is, and it's not. Yeah. You know, They're supposed to be leading indicators. Yeah, so it's supposed <clears> to tell you, okay, you know, with revenue, for example, if we're always 12% over, well, then I know that at the end of the month, every week is green. At the end of the month, we're going to be twelve percent at right. least. So then, that way, it is predictive. Exactly, but and it's not in the in the sense that it already happened. Yeah, a sale already happened. So it's one of those things that you know over the years, as we've had the scorecard, the measurables on there, we've changed it so many times. We've changed it, and sometimes we put a measurable on there that might last for a year, two years, and then we're like, it's funny because at our annual, we'll go over them and say, are are these still meaningful mm -hmm. to this group? Yeah. Do we still find meaning from this number? Or is it a number that we're just skipping over and just like, no, nah, okay. But it has no meaning to us. Right. And so from there, we change them. And yeah. we've, we've been known to change them just to because this item might be more meaningful. Or we might come up with a different number that we're like, wow, this is very impactful to our business. Right. We want to start seeing this. Yeah, some of them are based on a project that we were working on. You know, yeah. so... Uh, it's a really long-term project, not just a... Right. Not a week or... Like when we first started month. ProKeep... Yeah. Um, we wanted to see if that was working. So we checked how many incoming and outgoing messages came in from ProKeep. Yep. So we were tracking that as an executive team for about a year and a half. Yeah. And then once we saw that there was some good traction, we said, you know what? That's really not as important for us to watch, but another department should watch it. Yep. So we, we discontinued it on our list and asked another team to watch it. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's been good. It's been fun to watch it evolve yeah. over the years. So that's why I was telling this gentleman, you know, he's telling me, he's like, so how, how do you, well, which ones do you have? And I said, honestly, mine might not be meaningful to you. Yeah. So therefore, you know, you need to find your own and don't be afraid to change them. Yeah. It's kind of a living document. Oh, absolutely. And so, Hey, that one doesn't work. Let's switch it out. Let's, or let's change it or put a different one anyways well one thing that i'm excited about is we've started um using a crm in some of our departments yeah you know and at our annual this year we'll have enough historic data and enough time within that system that we can look at it and we can determine together whether that makes sense to have it on our scorecard because one thing that 
that should be tracked is interactions or touches with customers. Bingo. And so then we can say, okay, well, we had this many touches with customers this week. Is that a leading indicator that will affect revenue that we're also tracking? So we, we are really trying to watch our entire sales process and see if we can get good enough at it and predicting it well enough that we can affect it before it happens. And I think on there too, I, one of the things on the CRM, if I'm, I might be wrong, but it's bids, right? Bids, yeah. quotes that are switch, all, rolling over. Yep, they're all in those interactions. And yeah. so those are, I mean, that's information that I think is going to be very- Because there's a dollar tied to exactly, it. Exactly. Yep. To say, okay, wow, we have a win rate of, you know, 70%, okay, how do we get that to 80%? Right. And this is, you know, if we get to 80%, how much more revenue will we have and what do we need to do? So those are data points that are very good for a scorecard. Well, and then why are we losing on bids? Do we need to really start pressuring some of our vendors to get us more in line with pricing? Yeah. Do we need to, you know, start attacking it from a different angle? So all that information and data really helps us change our behaviors so that we can affect an outcome. Yep. Uh, so that's that's why we do the scorecard, um, and for me, I think it's important. Yeah, I love it. Um, and you know, in EOS, it says that you're kind of supposed to be obsessed with the scorecard, and I think as a team, we are, and we get kind of obsessed with numbers. Period. You know, we're all we all turn into a bunch of numbers geeks. You know, from time to time in that in those meetings. And I love it. And by it's the way. it's uh, it. it's Brandon's love language. So <laughs> feel free to bring that anytime you want. Talk numbers to me. But I think, yeah, that's like dirty talk. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think it's good for your team to be obsessed on the same thing. Yeah. Because then that creates drive toward those common goals. And that, that's the other thing, too. The scorecard should be all numbers. I think the team comes up with. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It shouldn't just be one person saying, this is going to be It our needs to be number. agreed upon. Yes. Yep. I love having everybody's buy-in. And, yep. So. Um, let's see. So Rock review. Rock review. So your rocks... Um, if you haven't had those done yet, ask your supervisor what rocks are. Rocks come from a concept. I think we've talked about it before where they're the big goals in your, in your 90 days. They're goals that fall outside of what would normally just happen in the occurrence of business. So it's not like, Hey, I'm going to show up to work five days in a row. Then that's a rock. That should happen anyway. <laughs> you know, if it's not, we should be having a conversation, right? <laughs> So it's things that are, it's projects you're working on. It's, um, it's things that will lead to better team performance. So a rock for, um, you know, a, a driver could be that they wanted to, you know, do 15 deliveries every day straight for 25 days, whatever it ends up being. And then you can actually track that. And you know that if you do that, that will lead to success for your team. Yep. So that's a rock. And you're supposed to share that with your supervisor. And then every week or every meeting, you report on whether or not you're on track with that rock. So are you, are you, if you look at it today, are you doing the things that you should be in order to make that so that you are accomplished within the 90 days? Yeah. I think it's on track, off, off track, track, or, or done. done. So sometimes you have a project that you're working on and, and you're done before the end of the quarter. Awesome. Um, it shouldn't be a layup. It shouldn't be something that is a cupcake. So you're done. You're like four days into the quarter. That's really a to do. That's not a rock. It's not. It's not big enough. It's not meaty enough to be a rock. So and over time, you'll get better at setting those too. Yeah. We're not expecting perfection out of the gate. We certainly weren't perfect. No. Out of the gate. It took us a long time to write rocks correctly. You're supposed to write them smart, yep. right? So it, it needs to be measurable. It needs to be achievable. It needs specific. to be relative. Yep, spe specific. It needs to be relative and timely. Yep. Um, so all those things you get better at over time. Yep. You know, I think at first we were kind of too ambitious with our rocks. Yeah. And so our success rate for our rocks That's was really low. That's another statement. <laughs> yeah. I think the first time we did it, we were under 25% on our success of rocks. And I think- And we took like seven each. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So over time, we've gotten better at but writing them smart, you know, writing them with what we truly think we can accomplish within the 90 days with everything else that's hitting your team during that month, uh, during those months. And then- taking enough that it, it's really meaningful for your department and not so many that that's all you're focused on is rocks. Because you, know? you still have a job to do. Right. And I think a lot of times the pitfall that somebody, some 
people have fallen into is, I'm not working on that. That's not my rock. No, that's not the point. You still have a job to do. You still have responsibilities to do. A rock is not the only thing you're doing that quarter. Right? A rock is also yep. something you're working on that quarter exactly. to push your department forward. If you're not doing your other assignments during the w- month, th- then your department's not going forward. It doesn't matter what your rock does. Yeah. So uh, you just get better at that over time. So yeah. again, we're not looking for perfection. It's taking us a while. And you should be honest with yourself and also your team. Yeah. When you do this review, um, we've had it in the past where it's on track, on track, on track, and then it's the week before. We're having our quarterly when yeah. everything's due and it's off track. Yeah. Hold on, time out. I, How, you were good up until yesterday. Yeah, like what happened here? Well, well, I finally looked at it. Yeah, or a few weeks ago, you know, I kind of knew that I probably wasn't going to make it. Well, then why didn't you say off track then? Yeah. Because if it's off track at then, that point. Then it goes to the IDS. It goes to the IDS and we talk about it. Yeah. And it's not to, we're not trying to chew you out. It's to get help. Yeah, it's okay. What is it? What do you need from us? What resources can we give you from our departments or? Because a lot of time it is interdepartment dependent. Bingo. So, you know, James may have a rock for sales, but he really needs help from finance to get it done. Yep. And so maybe the trip up is something in finance and we can bring it up in that meeting in the IDS section and we could talk about it. Yeah. Bruce and, might not even know about it. Right. Because it's somebody else in his downline that that James is waiting on. Yep. And it's not that that person doesn't think that James is important all the time. You know, <laughs> I don't blame them if they don't. But it's that they, it's not as important to them because it's not their rock. Yeah. So, exactly. Um, so that's really rocks. Um, they are important. They're what helps drive our company forward. I think we've seen over time that those rocks really are everything to us. Man, you look back at the quarterly and you look at all the rocks and then you accomplish and you're like, holy cow, I can't believe we did that. Yeah, you, we always have a pause after we do the rock review in our quarterly, and it's always, um, you look at it and you say, did that make our company better after this last quarter than we were the previous quarter? And to this point, it's always been yes, but man, it's fun to look back and say, man, we did all that this quarter. Exactly. You know, it's just, it's incredible that everybody who's, you know, listening to this and isn't listening to this is a part of that success. And that we have all those people working toward common goals, that to me is awesome. Oh, I think it's amazing. It's it's a secret sauce that yep. we got going. It is. So we go from rock review right into our IDS, and that's identify, discuss, and solve your issues. So it's an issue list, and so you'll notice that it's not called problems. It's not called anything but an issue. It's just something that came up that needs to be solved. Um, so first, you have to identify it because if you, a lot of times. In previous iterations of our leadership team, you go right from hearing about it to solving it. Yeah. And you don't discuss it. And sometimes you don't even identify what the issue really is. I think that that's the root, the, identifying the root problem or the root cause. Yep. Um, it sometimes takes the longest time. Yeah. Sometimes we'd have meetings that it would be like, Why Here, you- here's the issue, here's the problem or the, the cause of it. And then here's my solution. Everybody get with it? Okay, let's move on. And it's like, whoa, hold whoa, on, whoa. wait, wait. I don't even think that's the real issue. And or are the we going to discuss this? And do you, why am I in this meeting? Do you not want my opinion on this? Right. Um, because do bring it I don't think this is maybe the best solution. What happens if we did it this way? And you, know, and you had some people that it was just like, you didn't say anything because, hey, that's what they wanted to do. And it's right. like, okay, I guess we're going to go along with this. Right. Knowing that. It's just going to blow up in their face. Right. And, and But they didn't want, they did not want to hear from you on the that other portion. Issue. And we probably should have said this from the beginning, but the other thing about a uh, level 10 meeting is in that meeting, everybody's equal. Very much so. And that's to, to go to your previous point, you know, there was a, there was a hesitation to call, you know, something out in a meeting previously, you know, in some different iterations of our leadership team that doesn't exist anymore, but it, that is the biggest thing that will keep you from growing as a team is if you're not honest with one another. Exactly. And you have to, you have to be able to call each other out in a respectful way and just say, whoa, wait a minute. I don't even think you identified that as a real issue. I think you think you know what the issue is, but I think the real issue is underlying in there somewhere. So yeah. let's kind of talk about what the identity really is of that issue. And then not reacting to that. Right. Because um, 
one of the I, I think that change that we've seen, Joey, has been a lot of it's our management style though. Sure. That's who the five of us, that's how we manage. Right. Um, you know, there are titles, there are re- certain responsibilities, and if you want to say there's a pecking order, technically there is. Sure. But I don't think that we live that. I think when we sit at that table, each of us is equal. Well, and and over time, we've developed a very very good rapport where there is respect. Yes, for everybody's respected by another person, so that it doesn't get finger pointy or anything like that. And the biggest thing that I tell people too is when we sit at that table, uh, at that table, at the table, at the, the table, at yeah. the table, is there's no egos. Yeah, you put them aside. Yep, and, and no emotion. It can't be at that table. Yep. So, um, I think that helps out a ton. Oh, it, it's when you everything. have that because there's times that I might have an issue that I bring up an IDS and I'm thinking one way and then I might get corrected by Joey, Bruce, James, or Ben and saying, dude, what are you thinking? Maybe maybe put the brakes on that for just a minute. Yeah, or that's really not the issue. This is the issue over here. Yeah. And, you know, it would be really easy for me to say, you know what, screw you guys. Yeah. Like, you're telling me what to do? Are you kidding me? Well, do you know who I am? Well, and I'm living in the issue. Yeah. So don't tell me what the issue is. Exactly. Right? And it could be, I mean, that could be your reaction. And what's really cool is our team, you look at that and you're like, whoa, I didn't even see that. I have my blinders on but because I am living in the issue. Exactly. I could not see that. I couldn't pull myself out of that issue. You know what? I trust you guys. And because of that, you know, I, I agree. And then you start discussing about the solution or discussing what the real issue. And now you come up with a solution. And sometimes the solution that I have in my head completely different completely different than what we actually come to a resolution for yeah. because now i have input from everybody and i trust everybody at that table that it's like you know what i'm walking away with this with a better solution than what i had well two minds is always always better than one always four heads are better than two five heads are great you know i think that four heads four heads well some people have a five head oh some people have a six head Oof. hashtag bald and beautiful <laughs> Um, I think that as we come together and we make decisions, not just our team, but anybody within our organization, if you get that collaborative effort, that's why it's one of our core values. If you get that collaborative effort, you're always going to be more successful. Yeah. It's always going to be a better outcome if you're doing it together. Just to get that different perspective and context, uh, it's always going to be better. And to be able to truly collaborate, you have to be humble. And honest. Yep. Yep. And you have to be, the humility part of it is you got to be ready to be wrong. Yep. And be okay to have someone correct you. Yeah. Because it's not a, that's not an indictment on your character. It's just everybody or working Or challenging together. your authority no. or your intelligence. It's everybody working together. Yep. And it's okay to be wrong. It really is. You know, we're all wrong. If, here if you want to know if I'm wrong, go just talk to my wife. Exactly. She'll give you a whole list of things that exactly. I'm wrong about. And that's, it's okay. It's okay to, to acknowledge that we're all human. I still love you, Chris Lee. <laughs> uh, so I think the IDS is really the, f- it's the funnest portion of the meeting. It's the yeah. longest portion of the meeting. It's not reporting. Everything else is kind of the reporting part of the meeting. Um, it's where the, the real meat and potatoes are, so to speak. And, and one, one aspect of this that I don't think we went over that I really found value from, from any other meetings is an old school meeting. The person that is usually the boss comes in, here's the agenda, here's the items. And this is how we're going to talk about all the items. Right. And in an IDS session that we have a true, true IDS session, we actually vote as a group, yeah. what's the most important? And it's one, two, three. Yep. And that's how we go through it. It's you don't one, rank two. it one through 10 because that's a waste of time. Yep. And it's not what Brandon wants. It's what the group wants. Right. Which I think that that was kind of a what got me hooked really onto these these level 10 meetings. Is, yep. Wait a minute. Now I have a say in what we actually talk about. Right. Because there's some things that are more important to me than other things. But to say, oh, that's important, then what's really cool is then you start hearing, I get a Ben that's like, oh, yeah, I've been wanting to talk about that too. And a Joey, and then come to find out, it was everybody every, everybody wants to talk about right. it. And the, the other thing too is as you talk about these, I would say these meetings are not about quantity. It's about quality. Right. And so if you only get through one issue and it takes you 60 minutes and then your time's up, Awesome. Then that High was five. the most important thing. That's what you were supposed to do in that meeting. Yep. Um, we just got out of our quarterly yesterday, which is really kind of a, 
a level 10 on steroids a little bit. Yeah. We do a little bit more, but it's really a level 10, but it's just a longer time longer period. Longer with goal setting and quarterly reviews. And the IDS section is a little bit longer, and we have topics that are maybe a little bit higher um, level, I guess, of – Okay, how this this isn't a thing that we got to get done in a week, but because rocks are created in that exactly. Meeting. So we're talking more about the business and what's going on in, in the, business. the next ninety days. And yesterday, just let everybody know, we had a topic that we were talking about at the very beginning that I didn't expect us to talk, but I, I think we went a good forty five minutes. Yeah, it was over forty. Yeah, forty five minutes on this topic, and it got to the point. It's like, okay, are we done? Are we right. done? And Something Everybody was good. Yeah. yeah. So then we were able to move on, but I was surprised by how long it took us. And yesterday, I don't think we, I didn't feel like we got through a ton of issues quantity wise, but the quality of that, I was, you and I talked last night. We always do this after we get done with a, a quarterly, Joey and I will talk debrief. and kind of, Hey, how did you feel? What did you think? You yep. know, were any issues or every, was everybody involved? How and was the I, energy? <clears throat> And I felt like that one was probably one of our best ones that we've had. It was awesome. So, and we didn't get through that many no. items, but we talked about the most important issues for our company at that time. Yeah, it was um, the thing that I think I kind of fell in love with the, about the level ten meeting was the the accountability. Yeah, the because out of every the IDS, to-dos. yeah, every IDS, if there is an action item that comes out of that, the person's action is accounted for. In like actual script, you know, it's like, you know, Joey is going to talk to this vendor about this pricing change by this date. There's a date stamp on it for when it's going to be done. And if I have to be accountable for that before the next meeting in the to-do list. So there is built-in accountability to that. And so you know that there will be progress in that meeting because the biggest frustration, and you and I had the same frustration, is, you know, before those meetings came about, Man, we'd go to these meetings and we talk about the same thing we talked about the week before. Yep. And there would be no progress forward. Nobody's even tracking who's supposed to be accountable for anything. And so people were skating by. And man, you and I, we take our positions and our jobs very seriously. And if something is given to us, we take care of it. And that's the frustrating is I'm doing my end. Right. Why isn't everybody else doing their end? And pulling their weight. And so this meeting format tracks that. And it helps all of us maintain that accountability and that ownership of of what we're supposed to do. Bingo. And you know, and it it's not give, to call anybody out no, or make them feel bad. It reminds them exactly. And the really, we talked about it when we were recapping that to do. If someone doesn't fulfill it, it goes to the IDS, and that actually should be one of your top IDS that you talk about. Yeah, it should. By be. the way, um, but when you talk about that, it's not like. Well, why did you screw this up? I can't believe you didn't get this done. No, that's not what it's for. It's to say, okay, hey, Joe, you didn't talk to that vendor. What do you need from me? Yeah. Do you need? Did you have his contact? Do you need a new contact? Yeah. I got a. I can call him. Yep. And what resource do you need? Put pressure on him. Exactly. It's this. How do we do this? And it might be even. Hey, can you just remind me on Wednesday about that? Yeah, I can remind you on Wednesday. Right. On about that. So. It's it's a really cool system. I, that I would agree with. That was the other thing that hooked me on this is yep. now we can – people can't hide. Right. And they can't skate by. Right. It's now everybody's pulling their weight and moving forward. Well, the um, – at the after the IDS, you always have a recap of your to-dos yeah. in your conclusion. And by the way, I would say your IDS, I would say it's, what, 95% of the time you're going to have a to-do coming out of an oh, IDS. You, you definitely should. Almost every time. So if you're – having an IDS and no to do comes out of it, you might want to rethink that. Yep. Cause most likely there should be a to do. I think very rarely do we have one where it's like, uh, there's really nothing nobody's going to do anything. That. And it might be because we've had a discussion. The most likely what's happened is we're going to move this to like our annual where we can spend or our quarterly where we're going to spend more time on it yep. to talk about it. That's maybe when a to do doesn't come from it. Right. But 95 98 percent of the time there's a to do that comes out right. of this yeah there's the recapping of those is the opportunity that that person has to say wait i i don't understand what i'm being asked to do yeah or it's not written smart for me or hey not all that's going to get done in a week can we rewrite that you know because sometimes it's a two-week process so you write that as 
well, what are you going to get out of that two weeks done by the end of this week? That's your portion of it. And then yep. the following week, you get a new to do for that next week. So it's, I love the way that it's built. I think it's really made us a, a better company and a better team. Really, it keeps us on track, and the f- the formality of it, I think, is actually good. Yeah, the fact that it's formal, you have to do the same format every week, and there's a cadence to it. I love that 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 is there. It's a safety for us. There's no surprises. No, so you don't you don't get lazy on it. Yeah, that's why I think it's important to keep it formal, so that you it, it, you do take it seriously. Yep, because. You know, we're not all here for practice. We're here to get things done. Yep. So, um, and we want to. We want to. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we all want to be better. We all want progress. And then after that, cascading message. Yep. And so that's basically anything that comes from this meeting. Is there anything that we messaging that needs to come from this group to To our department or anything like that? And you know, from our from the executive team, it's is there any messages that need to go out to? The, the company, company as a whole basically yep. is what we need and then after that where we get the name of the level 10 is the last thing that we do for this is rate it yep and we go by person every person has to say out loud what is that rating that you have for it and it's from a scale of one was this was horrible was it worth my time i can't believe we're having these probably should have walked out yep 10 to where this was one of the best meetings that I've ever had. We should continue having these and they're it, phenomenal. It was worth my time and I found value. Yep. And what is seven? Anything below an eight. Eight. Then the person so who's seven running the below. meeting needs to talk to that person and find out why they didn't find value. And we've had to do that. And this is the time to be honest yeah. about that. And if you're running the meeting, if someone puts a seven or a six or a five, don't be offended. No. That's when you pull it's them to the action. side and say, what can we do different to yep. make it so that it's a 10 for you? Yep. And I will be the first one to tell you that I have sat in meetings when we first started these that I gave an eight just so I wouldn't get called out. Yeah. When in reality, I felt like it was a five or a six. Right. And did that help? No, it did not. Yeah. I can tell you that right now. It did not well, do because that. Because we didn't feel safe in the room. Exactly. Yeah. But now, I mean, I, you know, I, I, te- I run our meetings for that. That's my, part of my responsibility. And, you know, you've given it a six before and we've talked about it. Like, yep. okay, what's up? What, what didn't you have? Well, I don't think that people were being honest. So we, or, need to, we need to call them out. Or, you know what? It just didn't run on time. We didn't, we didn't talk about the things that we were supposed to be we, talking about. The most we, important things We kept didn't going come down up. rabbit holes yep. and it wasn't, we weren't same focused on the meeting. And, yep. Or, I, this wasn't you, but that we've had meetings where other people have ran them, and then it's like that person, yeah, you know, they didn't run it very well. Right? They let they let us go on tangents. They yeah. didn't call us back. They didn't ask for everybody's feedback, or they were cutting us issue. off too early. Yep, and moving on. Yep, yeah. So there's there's uh that's important. Got to be honest. Yep, that's important to, and don't give people a freaking like nine point two. Or, you know, don't give me the points like that. that you can't tell me that you, you know, you might've got a 9.6, but you know, you, you breathe twice in the segue and that bothered me. Like, <laughs> come on, you know, just, just keep it simple. We're not here for science. You know, this is, this is not that serious. So. Now I know how to rate it next time. <laughs> 9.4. Uh, I do 0.5 sometimes. Yeah. I'm sure you freaking do. That sounds about right. Yeah. So anyway, that's, that's the level 10 in a nutshell. Yeah, I would tell just to cl- wrap this up. When we were talking about EOS, this was probably the item that sold me on EOS. One hundred percent. This is it. This was once we started doing these and we kind of got in a rhythm. After a few months, I was like, okay, it's what hooked us. We we can't get rid of this. Yep. We need to have this. We had even talked about certain aspects of EOS that were like, eh, I don't. I'm not sure about that, but I do love the level tens. Yeah. And the level 10s kept us hooked to it. And then we started, started finding value in the other components of EOS. Yeah. yeah. But this was the one item. So if you're ever wondering, like, why did we do EOS? And you know, what was level 10s yep. was the thing that hooked me and I think the rest of our team. Yep. That, that's why we stuck with EOS right. over the years. Yeah. So I, if I could just, you know, give anybody out there some advice or, you know, one plea for you, if you're not having a level 10 consistently, in your department, please ask your supervisor why you're not. And 
you know, they should have a good reason why. And if it's because they haven't been trained on it yet, please let their supervisor know because we need to have everybody in this company consistently giving feedback so that we as the executive team know what your needs are. That's the only way we know it is if it's cascaded through your level 10 system. You know, this is the way that you have your message box that you get to tell us, hey, I have some feedback. Please use this level 10 system so that we can get you those resources or we can get you the answers that you need. Yeah, we have some great resources if you guys need help with it. Yep, we we're have, here to help. We have people that will actually come out and do it with you Yep, uh, if you're running a meeting or anything like that and just help you with that if you feel nervous about it or, you know, it's uh, yeah, intimidated by it. Yep. It's, we have tons of resources and people that will come out and help. There's no need to be embarrassed if you're not holding them. This is the call to action. Yep. So please just do it. So that's it. That's our soapbox. Love it. Okay, guys. Thanks for spending a little bit of windshield time with us, and we'll catch you down the road. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.